I want to look today at a very fun shaded region area question. Some friends of mine showed this to me. It was apparently a bonus question on some kind of seventh grade assignment, which is pretty surprising to me because without one particular insight, this is a relatively difficult question. We'll get to that insight in a little bit though. How should we approach these composite area questions in general? Well, just as its name would indicate, composite area questions are all about determining what are the shapes that compose the area where interest in. in this case, we have a large quarter circle, so we want to separate that out. And then we're looking at the intersection of two smaller semicircles. This little blue area left over, that kind of oval shape, that is the intersection between the two semicircles. Now, because this oval shape is the intersection between those two semicircles, we need to be careful when we decide what to add and subtract in this particular problem. For example, it's tempting to say, well, all we need to do is add together the quarter circle and the weird football shape. So subtract away the two semicircles, and there it is, that's our total area. But without realizing it, subtracting both of these semicircles means we've actually subtracted away this kind of football-shaped area. So adding it back in just once only compensates for the time that we subtracted it away as we subtracted away the semicircles. To do this properly, we're actually gonna need to bring in a second football-shaped region because that's going to compensate for the fact that we are accidentally subtracting it away when we subtract both of those semicircles. Otherwise though, that's it. Add together the two footballs and the quarter circle, subtract away the two semicircles, and that will be the original shaded region that we wanted. In three of these cases, computing the areas are quite simple. The quarter circle, for example, we can tell has a radius of four from the original problem. And so all we're going to do is take our area formula, pi r squared, and divide it by four. Four, because of course, four quarter circles make up a full circle. In this case, that means we're looking at pi times four squared over four, which works out to four pi. So there's part of our answer right there. We wanna do the same thing for these semicircles. Of course, it's gonna be pi r squared over two now, but we do wanna recognize that our r is different. In this case, the full base was four, that is the diameter of the semicircle was four, but the part we're gonna be interested in, the radius, would be half that much. And so what we're gonna plug in here is two. Pi times two squared divided by two is two pi, and of course that's going to be the same for both of these semicircles. So this area is also two pi. You'll notice that means something interesting has happened. The area of the quarter circle and the area of the two semicircles actually happens to be the same. Subtracting them away from each other leaves zero. What this means is that our entire area just comes down to two of those football-shaped regions. Interestingly, in the context of the original problem, that actually tells us that the one football-shaped region here must have an area that's the same as this kind of outer region there. Let's leave that aside though and just compute the area of the football-shaped region. Now, this is the part that I would not expect a seventh grader to know. I didn't even know it until I had to look it up for some GCSE question a few months ago. You can click on that video if you wanna see it here. That football-shaped region actually has an official name. It's called a symmetric lens. And there's actually a formula for the area of a symmetric lens. It looks like this. R squared, that is the radius of the circle that kind of incorporates that lens, times theta minus sine theta. Now the theta in question here is basically what portion of a circle intersects to make this particular lens. Here, for example, if I encase that kind of football-shaped region in its own circle, I can see it's taking up 90 degrees of a full circle. That's where I'm getting the intersection on the other side that creates the football-shaped region. So my theta is going to be 90 degrees, though in the context of this formula, I'm going to need to use radians, meaning I'm actually going to use pi over two. The radius, again, refers to the radius of the circle that's creating that symmetric lens, and so that's going to be two, meaning I'm going to plug in two for the radius, pi over two for theta, and I'm going to compute two squared times pi over two minus sine of pi over two. Two squared, of course, is four, pi over two just is pi over two, and sine of pi over two is one. If you don't know why, you should check out my video on the unit circle. But sine is the y coordinate as we move around a unit circle. And when we go 90 degrees clockwise, wait, counterclockwise, yeah, our y coordinate is one. As we distribute now, four times pi over two is two pi, four times one is four. And so the area of each one of these football shaped regions is two pi minus four. Putting that all together, our total area is going to be four pi minus eight and there you have it, that truly strange composite area 
region, area, shape, whatever, is four pi minus eight. Now, as I said at the beginning of the video, that's actually the long way around. And again, the reason I think this probably was on some seventh grade homework is there's a much more clever way to get this done. If we think back to this original figure, and we split this region in half, we can see that the part that's left over there, if we kind of flipped it across to the other side, would perfectly fill in the portion of the circle that is in a sense missing. If we do this on both sides, what we're going to end up with is no more weird football shaped region at all, but simply a quarter circle minus a triangle. Or perhaps it makes more sense in this little animated version I have for you. You can see there it is. All we need to do is figure out the area of the quarter circle with a radius of four and subtract away an isosceles right triangle with base and height of four each. Our quarter circle formula again was simply pi r squared divided by four, where the radius in this case is back to being four. And again, we figured out that that was four pi itself. And then this triangular portion here again is a simple right triangle with a base of four and a height of four. And so we can use base times height divided by two to figure out that that area is eight. Meaning once again, when we subtract these two numbers, we're going to get a total area of four pi minus eight. And I think you'll agree with me, that's quite a bit easier than trying to figure out all the football shapes and symmetric lenses and everything else that we had to do the first time. What does this teach us in general about composite area problems? The main thing that it says to me is look for symmetries. Look for pieces you can kind of slice up and move around in symmetrical ways to hopefully simplify the kinds of shapes you're looking at and therefore not need to use any weird symmetric lens area formulas. I hope you've enjoyed this exploration of a fun composite area question. If so, check out one of those other other two videos I talked about earlier. Maybe I'll put the links down in the description. You can see more about symmetric lenses if you would like. And I don't even remember what the other video was, but in editing I will, and I'll put the link down in the description. Otherwise, I'll see y'all next time. Oh, I can't believe I left that as a trapezoid. That's so embarrassing.